In the past, RoboRebel has been one of the best ways for you to spend your tickets to maximize rewards. Due to some of the recent changes, it's gotten a lot harder. But it is still very possible for you to consistently get maximum rewards. Today, I'm going to be giving you the five best brawlers to play in the new Robo Rumble, as well as give you some additional tips to help you reach that 6 minute and 15 second mark every single time. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Stein and it's time to brawl. Now today we're going to be talking about Robo Rumble and as you guys know, it just recently got a little bit harder. But it is still an incredibly effective way for you to consistently spend your tickets so that you can get the most rewards possible. Whether you are new to Robo Rumble or you are a veteran player, I'm going to be giving you the best tips to help you maximize your rewards every single time. This is going to include a list of the best five brawlers for Robo Rumble as well as how to play them, as well as some other tips to help you out. But before I did give my best tips, I did want to quickly outline how Robo Rumble works since it has been changed in the last up as well as give a quick crash course for those new players that are new to the game. First of all, if you are a veteran player, here is how Robo Rumble has changed. Now the bots will spawn anywhere within 360 degrees of the safe. It seems to be that they are actually spawning really close to the edges of the map. The map is now the size of a showdown map with the safe in the center and there are some balance changes that happened. The sniper bots had their HP nerfed by 30% and they now actually deal 3% more damage and on top of that their shots actually shoot much faster which makes it a little bit more tricky to actually dodge them than they used to be regarding the boxer bots after the third boss the boxers no longer charge at you but their damage is actually increased by 22 percent and you will notice that the walls on the maps are now going to be destructible which means that the boss will now break his walls with his rockets and that you should be very careful to not break the walls with your own supers this has made it much more difficult for you to receive those maximum rewards at six minutes and 15 seconds than it used to be, but it is still very possible. In fact, as I am recording this video, a team has reached 6 minutes and 43 seconds, and over 10 players have reached over that 6 minute and 30 second mark, which is 15 seconds over the maximum reward time. Okay guys, now I wanted to give a quick crash course for those newer players that are unfamiliar with Robo Rumble. In Robo Rumble, the goal is to keep the safe in the middle of the map alive for as long as possible. The longer the safe is alive, the more rewards you earn. So you are aware, you receive a maximum of 32 tokens for every one ticket that you spend in Robo Rumble. And like I've said in the past, that happens at 6 minutes and 15 seconds. You can actually go to leaderboard.brawlstars.com to see which brawlers have the top times for the most recent season, along with which brawlers they did that with. Typically, if you want to get the biggest rewards possible, you need to have the brawlers with the highest damage sustained over a long period of time. This means that they need to be able to deal a lot of damage and also have a fairly fast reload speed. Currently, the five best brawlers in Robo Rumble are Pam in first, Jesse in second, a tie for third between Frank and El Primo, and Bull in fifth. One note, brawlers that do have high damage but slow reload speed like Leon or Brock or Spike really tend to struggle a lot in Robo Rumble. And then obviously, brawlers that don't have very good damage really really struggle. Now let's review some quick tips for using each of these five best brawlers in Robo Rumble and then we'll go over several other tips to help you get the fastest time possible. Now in my opinion Pam is the best brawler to play in Robo Rumble despite her having a slightly lower DPS than Bull. One single cog does not deal very much damage but if she hits all nine she absolutely melts through enemy bots. This means that you want to be very close to the enemy bots so that all nine cogs actually hit the target, but not so close that those melee bots can actually deal damage to you. The best method for you to do this is to get up close to a bot, auto aim your shot, and then walk in the opposite direction that you were firing. Another tip with playing Pam is to make sure that you're not just firing from a long distance, even if you're facing against those sniper bots, because she does very little damage from a distance. As far as her turret goes, I highly recommend placing it directly on the safe. This means that you and your teammates will be able to utilize it no matter which direction the enemy bots are coming from. Additionally, it can also be used as a distraction against some bots that actually do get close enough to the safe to deal some damage to it. Jesse is number two on the list of best brawlers for this despite not being very popular in the previous Robo Rumble. If her regular attack hits three bots, she actually has a slightly higher DPS than Pam's. Though this does not happen consistently, it is really helpful later on when you're trying to actually get close to that six minute and 15 second mark because at that point 
There are bots coming from all sorts of directions, and she frequently does hit three ballers at a time. But on top of that, why she's really helpful is because if she places her turret directly onto the safe, it will be able to attack all of the bots that are also able to attack the safe. This adds a ton of additional damage per second, which can be super helpful. Her one weakness, though, is that she has a very low DPS against the boss. My best tip is to place her turret in a spot close enough to the boss so that it will be able to kill it, but not so close that the boss will actually be able to hit it back and take it out. If you do it right, Jessie should almost have another super charged by the time the boss gets taken out. Then you can throw her turret back onto the safe so that it can resume destroying bots. Frank is tied for third with El Primo. Now Frank against one single bot does not have a very high damage per second, but if he is able to attack two bots at once, his DPS is 55% higher than Pam's. Although he's not able to consistently reach this DPS near the end when there are lots of bots, he's very likely to be able to hit two bots at a time and possibly even three. His super can also be incredibly useful in stunning multiple brawlers or the robo boss, which can actually give the moment a team to kind of recuperate. If Frank supers three bots and hits them with two regular attacks, he can then fully recharge his super back and then go back to wrecking other bots. One of the most important things when you're playing with Frank is to be very careful to not destroy the walls surrounding your safe. Those walls are very important because it gives you a guidable pathway for those bots that you know they will be going there. And it also prevents a lot of bots from being able to attack from all degrees of the safe, which makes it very difficult for Frank to actually hit multiple brawlers because they're less likely to bunch up. Another thing that's very important when playing with Frank is that he does have that shot delay, which means you have to pay very close attention to how much HP he has and whether or not you should actually attack because it sometimes will result in you getting taken out. El Primo is also a really great brawler to use in Robo Rumble. His DPS matches Pam's and he has a super that can reset the boss's rocket attack. The trick to El Primo is using walls to get close to snipers and then quickly taking them out until they are gone. When facing against melee bots, he wants to walk toward them until they are within melee range for him, but then walk backwards as he's attacking forward so that he's able to take them out without them dealing damage to him. If there are multiple bots really close to each other, El Primo can double his high DPS by attacking two bots at once. This does risk him actually receiving a lot of damage and being taken out, but if you can risk it and you know that you have the HP reserve to do so, this is an incredibly effective use of El Primo. Bull is also a decent option in Robo Rumble. He's not quite as good as the others, but he does offer a slightly higher DPS than Bull Pan and El Primo, even without his star power, which doubles his reload speed when he falls below 40% health. Bull should be played similarly to El Primo, but you have to get especially close to those bots in order to make his entire shot land on them. Bull can actually be a really great brawler to use in Robo Rumble because of his star power when he's maxed out, but he's definitely a more high high skill brawler to use because of his short range. Now that we've talked about the best five brawlers to use in Robo Rumble, let's go ahead and give some of the best tips in order for you to help improve your time, which will help you get closer to maximizing your rewards. Now this first tip is gonna be pretty simple. Obviously you want to look at those five brawlers that I suggested and ask yourself which you can level up as quickly as possible because those level ups do make a big difference in the DPS that you're going to be able to dish out to the bots. Another obvious tip, I promise they're not all this obvious, but I would also recommend actually creating a team and playing with your friends or even your club members rather than playing with randoms because having an organized team with brawlers that you know are good in Robo Rumble is going to be much better than risking it and hoping that you'll get lucky with some randoms. Now you never know where the enemy bots are going to spawn. The best strategy that I've found to consistently work is for everyone to stay somewhat near the safe and this way it doesn't actually matter where the bots come from because someone will always be close to the safe and be able to take them out. That being said, if you and your teammates are really good at the game and you know that all three of you can solo an area, you can split the map into three separate parts and kind of dominate those three parts individually, soloing those bots. This gives you a little bit of extra room for you to fall back once things do get difficult, but just make sure that you do actually fall back before you get taken out and get killed or you'll be in a worse off situation. It's also very important for you to pay attention to which wave you are on and know which waves the robo bosses actually spawn so that you can go more towards the middle of the map so you're not having to walk all the way across the map uh, once he does actually spawn. Now the robo boss does spawn every seventh wave for the first three sets of seven. So on wave seven, on wave 14, and on wave 21. These robo bosses have an insane amount of HP and you will want to get rid of them as quickly as you can so that they are not still alive when the next wave of robots join the party. As long as you keep your distance, it's actually really not too hard to take them out, assuming that you and your teammates all have brawlers that have high DPS and 
nobody gets killed. Just make sure you stay out of range of his melee attacks, and when he starts firing those rockets, you can walk to like slightly to the left or slightly to the right to start avoiding taking that damage. One thing you really want to make sure is that that robo boss does not fire rockets at the walls near your safe, as I mentioned earlier, because that actually opens up more access points for the robots to get to your safe. This means that is an, a good idea to actually get on the opposite side of the boss than where your safe is, so that he will start firing backwards and away from the safe. Frank, El Primo, and Bull, and any other brawlers that can actually like knock back or do a stun will actually be able to use their supers to stop the boss from firing their rockets, and that can be incredibly helpful. And once again, make sure you are paying close attention to which wave it is, so that you can be prepared to walk toward this robot boss whenever it pops up, and it could pop up anywhere on the map in a random location, so you definitely have to be prepared. Another tip that I have is to make sure you use the walls to try to get close to those long-range brawlers so they are not able to fire at you while you're kind of closing that gap and getting close to them so you can take them out. Additionally, in Robo Rumble, you have a respawn speed of 10 seconds, which makes dying very punishable. It's almost always better for you to stave alive than it is to sacrifice yourself in order to like prevent some HP on the safe. As such, it is a good idea Idea for you to use turrets or the safe as some sort of a shield to help you heal up. The exception to this rule is if you know that the safe is doomed to fall because your teammates are dead or there are too many bots closing in and there are just too many bots attacking it and the last thing you can do is just throw yourself in front of the fire so that hopefully it can last one second longer and get you some more rewards. Another tip I have is that if you there is a Pam on your team, Pam and any tank can actually cycle back and forth between healing and dealing damage, just going back and forth as her turret does allow for those good nice heals. But this is especially nice when you have a max Pam on your team because her star power offers that additional healing. Another big tip to playing Robo Rumble is to not spam your auto aim. It is beneficial in a lot of situations to use auto aim, but don't spam it because if you spam it, you will likely waste shots on brats that are dead and where damage per second is the most important thing in Robo Rumble, every single shot counts. Another tip that I have is you do not always have to fall back to the safe. If you have the option to, it may be better for you to lead the bots away from the safe and kind of like cause a train, you know, where they're just kind of chasing you, and that way you can prevent the safe from taking damage. Training is a really good strategy, especially as a last ditch effort to try and get a few additional seconds added to your time, but it's likely that it won't last forever, so be prepared for once it you get taken out and everything kind of falls to pieces. Anyways, guys, those are all of my tips for Robo Rumble as it is right now. If you have additional tips, make sure you put it down in the comment section below to help newer players that might not quite be as experienced as yourself. Additionally, make sure you subscribe for future Brawl Stars content similar to this. I mean, you know you want to. And before I end the video, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors for helping support the channel in a very big way. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.